Did we like it? And how did everyone look? Are we stealing stuff from it? Is it problematic? It's brunch movie reviews. Um, th so this was a polarizing movie. Uh, what happened was, came out, everybody said it was the best movie ever, then everyone else saw it and said, what the fuck are you guys talking about? And, and then at some point, everybody decided that it was the worst fucking that, movie ever. You know what? This is weird. Th I would not think that three billboards would be this. Three billboards was the fucking La La Land of 2017. <laughs> That's pretty true, yeah. It's the, there are parallels there. Where, like, at first everyone was like, holy shit, it's so good. And then... People went to see it being like, so what's this best movie I heard about? It's like, no one said it was the best. They said it was really good. And then they come out and they're like, that wasn't the best. Fuck three billboards. <laughs> All right. Did we like it? I have a uh, 0.5 out of four. I really did not like this movie. Really? Yeah. There were a lot, a lot of things that bothered me and kind of like infuriated me while I was watching this movie. Yeah, I was always into it. I was always eager to see what was going to happen next. Um, I wanted to know how it was going to work out. I thought the storylines were interesting. Woody Harrelson's character of the biggies is the only good person in this movie. Every character, unlikable, will be the best. This isn't the beat-up Mildred Hayes hour, but I think a big part of the story that a lot of people missed was my takeaway from this movie was... What a bad situation drove a seemingly good person to do. The yeah. big thing, obviously, is that in the end, she unites with Dixon, who is the biggest piece of shit established from the start of the movie. He's the worst possible person. And the lengths to which she goes to try to get answers, to try to make herself feel better, to try to get any sort of peace of mind because her daughter's murder and rape has gone unsol unsolved, is uh, like that's what the movie's about for me. I give it 2.8. Okay. Out of four. One of the, one of it's my a biggest big difference for us. One of my biggest complaints is how not subtle they were in the telling of like some of the aspects of the story. Mm. Um, like the the part where they do the flashback. Yes, that, that was, was my big like give me a break. Cringeworthy, yeah, where the daughter gets raped and murdered, and they go. They have this flashback scene like the last time that they that they interact. She leaves the house after a fight, and she's like the mom makes her walk. She yells. Well, I hope I get raped. She's. I hope I get raped. And the mom yells, "I hope you get raped too." It's like, come the fuck on. How did everyone look? Um, I'm giving this one a 1.5 out of two. Um, I thought everybody looked like pretty much what they were supposed to look like. I thought Woody ha Woody Harrelson looked great for a guy who had uh, seemingly terminal cancer. Heavy cancer, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Peter Dinklage wasn't a big fan of his look. <laughs> his in this mustache. Movie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like everybody kind of looked like uh, looked the part for a uh, Missouri like rural Missouri spot. If anything, the flashback was good to show how Mildred was before it all went down, um, which was like stressed out housewife versus like lady at the end of end of her rope. Um, but so, they did a great job of of making her look yeah. like kind of like the fed up. Yeah. older woman. So in that case, I give it a one, which okay. is just like it didn't do too much, didn't do too little. Like it doesn't really stand out, but right, like, give but it a clean it, one. It did what it was supposed to. Are we stealing stuff from it? Uh, hopefully not. Uh, I actually have two things. Um, so I'm giving it a one out of two. Uh, the two things that I thought were, hey, maybe I can use this later, is one, the uh, when Dixon is dancing inside the police station. Uh, while there's like a fire going on, uh, yes, him, that could be a great gif moving yeah. forward. Oh, where true. You're just ignoring shit, and true. Everything's burning around you. Uh, ah, yeah, so that's, that's, that's a good call. A pretty good gif there um, for future usage. Second one. If I ever kill myself, I'm going to put a bag over my head and just put a sign on it that says do not open because that's a pretty good idea. I've never seen it before. <laughs> that I haven't either. But so you you took bigger issue with other things that were a little obvious. That, I thought, was the most obvious thing in the world. Like, if there's a dead guy with a bag over his head, and the bag is, like, really, really bloody, <laughs> then maybe do not open. Like, I think that it's it, it's a it's a courteous thing that if you're going to shoot yourself in the head yeah. to kind of shield the, the person who finds you. Yeah. Um, I don't know how that came up as uh, stealing stuff, but, yeah, I'm not stealing that. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it, you know... You can't rule anything out. Okay. I'm going to give that a – so you, you raised a good point with the gifable stuff. 
Um, so I'll go. I'll go one point three. Would you go? Uh, one. One out of two. Okay. Um, now here's the big one. Yeah. This is the big talker. Is it problematic? So. I think a lot of people misinterpreted this movie because we're used to uh, finding a problem with everything and saying that everything is trying to give a bad message. At the end of the movie, Dixon, who is a piece of shit, and it's established throughout the movie, he is the biggest piece of shit going, uh, thinks that he might have found uh, this the, the killer and the rapist. So... He intentionally gets in a fight with him so we can get some of his DNA all up on him. And after that, they find out that it was not the killer. But he says, essentially, to Mildred, I'm going to go. I know where he lives, though, and I'm going to go fucking kill that guy. And she says, "Okay, I'm in. And then they go on a road trip. And because they teamed up, people interpret it as. Oh, why? Why did they try to humanize the racist? Why did they humanize the bad guy? They fucking didn't. He, she chose to go with the fucking bad guy because the one time the bad guy did anything that could have been productive or attempt to, it was of use to her. You have to admit that the basically the entire final act felt like it was a it was like a redemption arc for him. Not really. Did. He did it, one. I mean, it absolutely felt that way to me. Planted in your head from the beginning because Woody Harrelson's character leaves it in that note, and it's like, I know you're a decent guy deep down. And the whole redemption arc, but he never becomes a decent guy. But it hinges on that. It plants it in the viewer's head. Then that's that, their problem for misinterpreting no, it's the it. The movie's problem for fucking putting that in their head with that thing because you're expecting a redemption arc in the final act, and you don't get one. Who is the only one that ended up seeing him as a good guy or a guy worth uh, associating with? Mildred. And that's because she has fucking fallen so far that she's willing to go on a little murdery road trip with the racist, with the guy who fucking throws people out the window. If people took it as they forced on us that this guy was a good guy, then it means that you believe that he's a good guy. That shit's on the viewer. I thought that I think that the movie was smarter than people are giving credit for. What do you, what'd you give for a score for problematic? I mean, I know I gave it a zero out of two. I just found like I thought that there was so much shit in this movie that that irked me. So many little details that could come off as problematic. The nice fucking person in the movie is the little nineteen year old girl. She's so dumb. <laughs> yeah, she was so stupid. Uh, the zoo, the zoo, and uh, like the. Uh, special horse? person, yeah. horse riding Like a horse thing. washer. That was so unnecessary, but it was so funny. Yeah, so. it's weird that was the comic relief. Yeah. And that Peter that Dinklage moment. was the comic relief without short jokes. So, yeah, a- so. anti-problematic. You know what? But she was still so mean to him. That's because she's a bad person. <laughs> yeah. All right, I was going to make it 1.2 for problematic. I'm making it 1.8 because Jesus. Peter Dinklage and no... Uh, no they didn't they, make midget jokes. Right, but, but she didn't. To establish that they're assholes. Willoughby had a very problematic moment when he left his two young girls uh, by the river to go have sex in the woods with his wife. This is the guy who uh, just had billboards put up about him not solving a person, a young girl being raped and murdered. So then he responds by leaving his own two daughters Mm. alone while he goes and has sex. It's a good point you make. I'm going to bump that down from a (laughs) 1.8 to a 1.6. All right, let's add them up. This is way lower than i expected uh i have a three out of ten get the fuck out of here you three out of ten fucking god I, I didn't like it but it's lower than i expected all right i had a 6.7 out of 10 which is lower than i expected um i again i liked the movie i think that i like i would recommend this to my parents we'll log these just like we'll log all of them oscar noms brunch hit it boys